network technologies, specifically the internet, part one of two. So just to quickly recap, we get three types of network or network classifications. We've got PAN or personal area network. Normally that is Bluetooth devices or close range wireless devices. So Bluetooth, you can connect your headset, your phone to your laptop. You get printers that are Bluetooth or wireless. So that's all in close range, normally about 10 meters. I know they say Bluetooth go 100 meters, but uh, that's pushing it a bit. So you're looking at 10 to 20 meters. But again, it's it's a personal area that you create between your closed device. Uh, when I'm talking about close range wireless devices, we look at a, a mouse or a keyboard. It usually has a little dongle that comes with it. And that dongle only works with that specific keyboard and mouse so it's using normally a frequency about 2.4 gigahertz and it's only working with that specific device then we also have LAN local area network that's a home or office or a campus network and generally we refer to a close proximity so it's in a specified area so you think of your house everything you could have cables you can have Wi-Fi everything connected together or an office or even a school campus where everything on that site would be considered a LAN. Normally we're talking about when you go with a router or a gateway then you leave your LAN so your IP address or your IP range changes then um, you would go to a different network or a local area network and then we also have WAN or wide area network that's what we're going to look at today because that's where the internet comes in. So if we look specifically at a WAN a wide area network. It's a telecommunication network that extends over a large geographical area for the primary purpose of computer networking. Wide area networks are often established with leased line communications or leased telecommunication circuits. So geographical area, we are talking now between cities, between countries, and it basically covers the whole world you can get to that extent so you can have different WAN segments but in this case it can cover the whole world and then when we talk about least telecommunication circuits so um, think of your house if you were to have fiber at your house you don't actually own the cables connecting you to wherever it's going somebody owns the cables and you just use the cables for a specific purpose to connect if we're talking about the internet so one specific thing to look at here if we look at the image down below we would have a LAN so a local network the computers and servers and everything is connected via a switch and as I said earlier we generally used a gateway router and then we would connect to a LAN so there's always a gateway router to protect or to route the traffic from one network to another network so in examples of WANs, first one is a mobile network. So if you think of a 4G network or a data network, 3G, 4G, um, and it provides services to a populate area across a region or a country. So you with your cell phone, if you think about it, you are connected to a mobile network and you can travel across countries in your own country to different countries they call it roaming when you go onto a different network but you can still connect to your network and make and receive calls or go onto the internet so that's a wide area network where you are having a connection then the next example is banks if you think of a bank you would have one bank account yourself that bank account is located on a server somewhere in in the country but with your bank card you can go draw money at any ATM in the country or even the world for that matter and you can make payments you can view your balances via an app and then you can also go into shopping stores and use your card, your card to buy um, clothing or items that you would like so that means that everything is connected your bank account that's located on a server or using a wide area network or there's a wide area network there and you can use your account all over the country or the world due to the fact that there's a network the bank has got a network that's connecting all the different devices and apps and areas together and then the last one to to get what we are actually talking about today is the internet so the internet is also a WAN sometimes they call it a GAN a global area network because it spans the whole world but in in general terms it's still a WAN um, basically through the use of ISPs 
it connects a lot of smaller local area networks together so you've got a local area network you go through a router or a gateway and with your ISP together with your ISP and they connect you to the rest of the world via the internet all right so ISP let's just look at an ISP it is an internet service provider it's a company that provides services for accessing using and or participating in internet at a monthly fee so they charge you a specific fee um, it can be once off yearly monthly uh, per use how many whatever they use in the, the structure we've got examples we've got Vodacom in South Africa we've got Telcom Vox MWeb Web Africa and the list goes on so those are companies that provide internet services for you so you need to access the internet so with ISPs there's classifications of the services that they offer so they offer different services or let's just look at what an ISP can offer for you as a client so the first one is access providers so access provider ISPs provide internet access so they actually put you onto the internet they're employing a range of technology, so it can be uh, the old school ADSL, copper cable line, uh, LTE, that's mobile internet, or nowadays the common standard fiber to connect you to their network. Then we also have mailbox providers. So a mailbox provider is an organization or ISP that provides services for hosting electronic mails with access to storage for mailboxes. So we're talking about email here. It provides email service servers to send, receive, accept and store email for end users or organizations. Many mailbox providers are also access providers. So it means they provide internet to you. Do you think of uh, Vodacom? Generally you have a Vodacom account or you have an um, MWeb is your ISP or Telcom is your ISP. They also give you an email address as part of the package. But not all ISPs are access providers. So examples Gmail, Yahoo Mail, Outlook.com and the list goes on. So they don't provide access to the internet but they do provide you access to email. Then companies, universities, organizations, groups and individuals um, can even manage their own email themselves. So they are also mailbox providers. They, they have an on-site mail server and they provide it to the different um, clients and users. Then we also have hosting ISPs. So internet hosting services provide email, web hosting or online storage services. Other services include a virtual server, cloud service or physical server. So basically um, it is an ISP that is connected to the internet and you can then rent again for a monthly basis or whatever specific fee structure they have you can rent an area to host your website to host your own email address so you can you can manage your own emails there or you can just have online storage to save your files to back up your files or you can have a virtual service where they take servers and they actually rent out the processing power and a RAM so you have a specific area where that server so remember the advantages when it gets to that is they are always connected they have the backups they are providing the hardware and you are just renting that hosting part from them so you don't physically have to have all the infrastructure in place you will rent that from them so that's hosting ISPs and then we also have wireless ISPs or they call them WISP um, is an internet service provider with a network based on wireless networking technology may include commonplace Wi-Fi um, wireless mesh or propriety equipment so if we're talking about wireless internet service provider you get companies that specifically just work with wireless ISPs if you think of airports you get to an airport and then you pay a fee or you buy a once-off bundle or it can be a bundle that can be worked over a year and then the moment you enter the airport you can connect to that specific um, Wi-Fi so you're using you don't have to use 4G or 3G but you're using your phones or your devices Wi-Fi you connect and then you can use on the internet as necessary a lot of um, towns and cities are also now introducing wireless internet so um, they have Wi-Fi devices all over and then you connect again via your Wi-Fi device so you're not actually using a mobile network a 3G or a 4G so first example is how do we recognize Wi-Fi so this is obviously 
big um, example we've got wireless devices there this could be 2.4 or 5 gigahertz antennas so they are normally directional line of sight um, meaning they have to face each, face each other from one point to another point so at your home you will have a antenna like this and then you will have a general broadcast area from this provider over the area and then you connect via wireless connectivity and then the another one that we are mentioning here is wireless mesh networking now what is mesh networking so if we look at this picture that we've just put on now is in your house or even in a big area you've got wireless devices that overlap each other so they do come into each other space um, the reason why they overlap is not to have dead spots but they do talk to each other so they do pick up each other and they can see what the other wireless device or access point is doing um, and they make sure that they look at channels so that there's no interference and that uh, if there's a drop in signal from the one maybe there's interference there the other one will boost the signal again so they are basically creating a um, gapless area with Wi-Fi so but the main thing with mesh networking is the access points are actually talking to each other and making sure they keep the network stable and up for all the devices that needs to connect so um, these days you get home wireless mesh as well I know we're talking about internet but you can even apply that into a LAN where you get two three or four wireless devices that you connect into your house they talk to each other and they make sure you are covered all over all right now you need to make an informed decision regarding the internet so you want to have internet or you want to purchase internet um, but there's things that you need to consider when doing all of that so um, first thing is do you want to be mobile or not if you are renting and maybe every couple of months you are moving then it's not always worthwhile to go and install cables a fiber network or an ADSL network into your house or even a wireless antenna put it up at your house so then you'll probably go for a 4G or a 3G or a mobile network from a mobile operator um, even or if you want to you're traveling a lot you're a salesperson and you need to travel so then you'll rather go for a mobile internet package so those are your options obviously if if you've got a fixed place you've got a business then you would go for a cable connection um, in that then we're looking at a speed of the internet so or the speed of the connection so packages will offer different options and are measured and these days we're just going to look at megabits per second mbps um, and then there's your typical ranges um, we're looking at about four megabits per second that you can get uh, this is an example of the fiber internet that you can buy now and then um, you can go up to a thousand megabits per second or one gigabit per second okay the faster the connection you need to know the faster the connection the more you will pay so um, you actually pay for the speed that you are getting there so now you've selected you are going mobile or you're not going mobile you've selected your speed normally speed connection is going hand in hand with cable or wired connections then the next next vital thing to look at is capped or uncapped now when it comes to capped or uncapped we're talking about data so capped data has a set data amount per month and it's determined by the package you signed up for once allocated data is depleted a data top-up is required to regain connection usually unshaped connection we'll get to shape and unshape now so basically what this means you can buy two gigs of data or five gigs of data or 100 gigs of data and you get to use that data as you please they're not limiting what you can do with it but once it's done the internet stops for you and you need to buy more data then we also get uncapped it is unlimited data per month which sounds great you can you, you you're not going to be limited by data um, there's no worries about you running out of data but we need to we need to look at two things when it gets to uncapped capped especially when this it says generally uncapped accounts run off a higher contention ratio than capped accounts so what is contention ratio this means that generally more users are allocated to share a certain amount of bandwidth in uncapped than in capped so that means is think of a road if we're going to talk about bandwidth we'll discuss it a bit later as well but if we talk about a road the more cars on a road 
the longer it could take you to get to your destination. There could be a slow car, there could be a couple of trucks in front of you. So contention ratio means that there's more cars on the road. So uncapped, yes, it's unlimited, but you're getting onto a smaller road or a busier road. Where if you're buying capped, it's like um, going onto a toll road. So the roads are bigger, it's maintained a little bit better, but you do pay your toll fees. It's the same with cap. You have the limitation of you um, having a specific set of, um, set of amount of data to use. Okay. Then um, some uncapped packages may be subjected to shaping and throttling. So we're going to look now at what is shaping and throttling. So shaped or unshaped. So again, it comes hand in hand with capped or uncapped. With a shaped internet connection, priority is given to services like email, internet browsing, and FTP. So the basic stuff that doesn't actually use that much data at the same time. Other pro protocols like file sharing and online gaming receive a lower priority and will run slower at times when a network is busy. So maybe during office hours from 7 to 6 or 8 to 5, then they keep the basic services which businesses use um, unshaped, so it's fast, um, where the other things like gaming and downloading movies or YouTube or Netflix and all that, they make that a bit slower. Unshaped internet access treats all protocols the same. So throttling, it again, it's it's pretty much the same but it, there is actually a specific difference um, typically throttling is when your ISP limits your bandwidth so um, and after you reach a preset monthly data soft cap now soft cap come again in with uncapped data so although they say to you you have unlimited data um, a lot of ISPs what they do is if you for instance reach 200 gigabytes for the month they put you on a soft cap they don't cut off your internet, but they throttle you. They make your internet slow. So maybe you had a 20 meg connection, 20 meg megabits per second. Then they will limit you now to 2 megabits or 4 megabits per second. So that's called a soft cap. Um, but throttling can also occur when an ISP decides to slow certain online destinations like Netflix or YouTube. So that's why I said it goes hand in hand. They're basically shaping it, but as part of the shaping, so once they've shaped and they said, listen, this part is going together, these protocols and these protocols to get together, the ones that they consider non-priority, they will then throttle them. They will basically then make them slower. They have, ac they have the ability to then um, apply a throttle limit to it. So Here's a ex nice example or a simple example of what is happening with shaping and throttling. So firstly, you can see there the information goes from your computer. It goes to a filter uh, where your ISP is managing that. Firstly, they are shaping the differences in this example. We've got Internet Explorer, so it's browsing. And then we've got torrents and we've got Netflix. So they first split the two. That's called shaping. And then the next thing that is happening now is we've got throttling happening with that. So you can see the um, Internet Explorer has got a big area to work with. It's unshaped, it's fast. And then the throttled area, it's a small, small little tunnel where all that information needs to go through. So it's basically going to slow it down. Then um, wired versus wireless connections. So now you have all of that. We've got speed, we've got uncapped. So all of that goes together with wired or wireless. Now you need to make the decision, which one am I going to? So if we look at wired connections, advantages of a wired network. So enhanced speed, because it's a fixed cable connection. So I've, uh, we're looking at, again, fiber here in this case. Um, we, we buy a specific speed and it's nice and fast. Then lack of interference. There's no wireless connections that could be influenced by um, atmospheric issues, lightning storms or um, different devices that's interfering with each other. So a cable connection generally is shielded from any interference. So it will just work as it's intended to be. Increased security. Again, due to the fact that it's a cable, um, somebody have to actually gain access to the cable in order to tap into your connection. So that is not that easy. Um, uh, 
and probably you will notice that so it's not as easy with wireless connection so the security is better then higher reliability again based on all of the the, the um, parts above um, it's much more reliable it's a cable it's there and it works as it's intended to do let's look at the disadvantages of a wireless network so there's the bad stuff the advantages was good now it's the bad high installation cost and replacement cost so obviously because cables and infrastructure needs to be put in there's there's labor involved and um, it takes time and cable needs to be laid to your house if you're talking about fiber um, they need to physically from your edge of your street into your house they need to lay a cable so that costs money then wide connection does not provide mobility during uses as we said now uh, where the cable is connected that's where your internet connection is obviously you can have a little small wireless network around that but when i leave my home if i've got home fiber when i leave my home i also leave my internet connection behind so um, it's not mobile i can't move with it and then um, it takes as we said in the first one it takes more time to install because you have to lay the cables it needs to be connected and there's a whole process behind it so now we're going to look at wireless so advantages of wireless so the good about wireless mobility users can access the internet even outside outside the normal work environment so if you've got a 4g um, lte or a wi-fi type of network that is roaming it means outside of your uh, business area you can travel you can be literally on your car traveling between one city and another city and you can have access to the internet then um, it means more productivity so think about now you've got a mobile network you've got um, access to it all over the country that means for businesses people can now be more productive they can work uh, you're sleeping out um, you know at a lodge because you're working out of town you don't have to stop working due to not having internet you can actually now work beyond your normal hours so um, the employees are actually more productive you are still on a clock it's between eight and five you're sitting in the airport waiting to catch a, a flight for a meeting you've got a mobile connection you can continue working so it makes you much more productive deployment is fast you walk into a shop you sign up for Wi-Fi or a mobile connection and you work out with a SIM card or in white Wi-Fi scape you just a username and password and you're up and running so you already have everything in place to start connecting so you can connect as fast as 10 or 20 minutes depending on how long it takes them to issue you that information um, and all of that and then the installation cost is lower uh, if you think of a wireless connection if you already got a laptop or a cell phone it's got built-in Wi-Fi or a Wi-Fi sender receiver there's nothing needed so you just need to have access to the wireless network and you can connect the same with 3g or 4g you've got a cell phone it's already got all the um, hardware to connect there so you basically just need to sign up and go forward so the disadvantages now the bad about mobile connections range or poor coverage so you can be areas where the wireless coverage is not that good it's not covering that area very well there's there's interference so um, now you can have slow speeds or no access at all then your security can be compromised um, you, you get area things like Wi-Fi spoofing where they are trying to gain access to your um, username or password or because it's wireless somebody can sit at a distance and then actually try to hack in or gain access to your network or to your device in that matter and then based on coverage you can have slower or inconsistent speeds so um, as we know with wireless networks the more people that connects to it the slower it actually makes it so um, you don't have control if you've got wire, wired network you know how many devices are connected but with wireless you're not actually sure so if you go into a dense populated area your connection could actually be slowing down so talking about connections and speed so how do we measure it how do we know what we have so there's one big word that encapsulates that it's bandwidth so bandwidth describes the maximum data transfer rate of a network or a internet connection which is a network setup so it measures simple example it measures how much data can be sent over a specific connection in a given 
amount of time so it's basically from one point to another how long does it take and what information is um, being sent so remember I said earlier we are measuring it megabytes per second so how many megabits per second can we actually send um, around so in one second how many megabits can we send so that's basically how do we measure bandwidth so there's a nice example um, I know that we're talking about throttling but say throttling the bandwidth I see so there they depicting the um, network or the internet cable as the same as you would do for a water pipe and by squeezing it then you are basically making the data or water if they're taking about this picture going slower so um, the bigger the pipe the more water can go through it so the smaller the pipe the less water can go through it so that's bandwidth you want to have a bigger pipe so that you can push more water through it or more data um, in in network terms okay so broadband basically broadband this refers to a high speed data transmission in which a single cable can carry a large amount of data so broadband is basically a high bandwidth cable or transmission so the moment we start in talking about broadband it needs to be fast internet so generally we'll say you'll need to have broadband internet to watch HD movies um, online and then the last the last thing that is very important that we're looking at is latency okay so um, network latency describes delay that takes place during communication so moment I ask for something it there's a delay before I get a response so an example there is a slow router might cause a delay of a few milliseconds remember milliseconds so there's a thousand milliseconds in one second so it's actually still working very fast um, when one system on a LAN tries to connect to another so there's an example of a ping so on your computer you go into a command prompt and you ping a device so yeah I pinged Microsoft um, it gives me an IP address that's being pinged and as you can see there the time that it took it took 46 milliseconds so 46 milliseconds to respond or the server to get back their information so um, the round trip time was 46 milliseconds so the slower the time the basically the longer the latency it is for that information to come back so and then another example is um, the delay when it happens when two or more comp or two computers from different continents so it's it's a big area are communicating over the internet there may be a delay um, in simply establishing the connection because of the distance and the number of hops so if we look at the example that I've done now it's called this is a little um, app on on Windows it's called trace route to I went to products.office.com it's just a, an example of a um, of a server and you can see there on the left hand side it took nine hops so the first three hops was obviously in my local network so it was less than a millisecond it was lightning fast but the moment I start going through routers gateways so jumping from multiple servers from one server or one gateway to another um, the time starts adding up 28 milliseconds 29 milliseconds 46 54 and again at 47 so it actually went through nine networks or nine different routers to actually get to products.office.com from my computer. So it had to go through nine areas connections wherever that server is located in the world. It had to hop nine times to get there. So the, lo the more the hops or the longer it takes between the hops, that increases your latency and basically you get the delay. So you can have a very, very fast internet but just to make the connection takes a while because you have to go through I mean just just think of latency as the example if if you ask the correct person a question they will immediately give you answer but if they reroute you to now go ask that person now go ask that person go ask that person the time it takes you to go through nine people to get to the correct person that is latency so you still haven't received your answer um, you're just trying to get to the correct person to receive your answer